Hi, filmmakers. Welcome to another Shot Talk session. And uh, we are very excited for sound. Have you ever tried to watch a horror movie without the sound or the music playing? Um, I've heard people say it's a bit like a comedy. Yes. So today we are very, very happy. This shop talk session on composing and music for film. Um, first guest speaker is Carl Shepard. He is one of South Africa's leading pianists, composers, and theater music composers in his generation. He is internationally recognized and has a very distinctive compositional style and performance. Now he's worked on numerous uh, films and um, TV series, uh, Blood and Water, Savage Beauty, Season 1, Surviving Paradise, Indemnity, and one of my favorite films that I've seen recently, Barakat, which was South Africa's official entry into the Academy, uh, Academy Awards, let me try that again, sorry, and winner for Best Score at the 2022 Silver Skyrim Film Festival. He also works with theater practitioners, and Kyle was named as the Standard Bank Young Artist of the Year for Jazz, and in 2018 received the South African Humanities and Social Sciences Award hosted by the National Institute for Humanities and Social Sciences. Our other guest is Bram de Toy, also with an illustrious career in film and TV, he grew up in Swellendam and started composing at, the, composing at the age of 16 under the tutelage of Peter Klatso. He is the recipient of several local and international accolades. His extensive work in local and in international theater productions includes his opera, Postkantoor, with libretto by Tatius Kapp and the musical Die Kortstondige Raklewe van Anastasia Weer by Marlene van Niekerk. Welcome, gentlemen, to our Film It Shop Talk sessions. Of course, Film It is an initiative by Paul Roos Gymnasium uh, for young people, young high school learners, to tell their stories through film, and no film can go without music. Just my first question to you. Why do you think it is a good idea for musicians to explore making music for film and TV? Um, you know, when I grew up, and probably when you grew up, uh, I also started playing uh, as a, a violinist, actually, when I was five years old, uh, and then went on to the piano in my teen years, and then became a professional touring musician for 15 years, almost, before I started scoring anything. But in that, in that time, growing up, taking lessons, learning from legendary jazz musicians like Abdullah Ibrahim, Robbie Jansen, right through, going to New York, studying everywhere I could. Um, you know, the idea of writing to picture was never really even an option. It wasn't, wow. it wasn't really even spoken about. Um, but I kind of got the, I was kind of forced into an opportunity um, okay. by uh, a director that, that uh, heard something sort of cinematic in even my jazz work. Because oh. I was kind of into long textural, long textural type of playing, you know, as opposed to uh, lots of form changes, yes. if, if you know what I mean. Yes. And I reluctantly took that job, and okay. eventually the, the film Nume Scully went on to be a, a kind of classic on the Cape Flats, and also uh, Oscar nominated and all that. But what it, what it did, what occurred to me in that moment is, and why I went on to score some a little bit more after that is that I, I kind of feel like every musician or, or, or composer in any genre, I think it's, in a way, a, a little bit of a rite of passage to go and write some music for, oh, wow. for, for picture. You know, like John Williams, who we all know, the, the composer for Star Wars and the classic Superman and all of that. Um, he also started out as a jazz pianist and never, ever intended to write music for film. Never. He was the assistant for Henry Mancini and, you know, the classic component. Little, I think, Bernard Herrmann as well. Okay. And he, he would play the piano on their scores. So he was like a session musician. Okay. You know? And he speaks about it quite uh, elaborately, how he never really thought he would write music for film. But until he did, he, rea he realized, oh, okay, wow. It was like a next step in being a session musician, being a performer, and then if you want to... if for interest sake, you want to just go that 
do something else within your skill set. You know, writing for picture is that next thing. Yes. Okay. So that was my experience, and it kind of still is because I'm still a performer and and composer at the same time. So yeah. it's a it's a rite of passage. It's a next uh, broadening of your talents. I'm not saying it is, but I, I think it could be, or in okay. a way, should be that if you really call yourself a I say it like this because, you know, compared to Bach, we not really composers, <laughs> are we? You know, <laughs> Pat Metheny, the guitarist, says, compared to Bach, we all suck, right? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, let's call ourselves composers. Okay. Um, you know, if you really want to challenge yourself to write music, uh, you know, that serves a picture as opposed to serves yourself or serves a concert audience, yes. you know, that's an interesting challenge I found. Okay, yeah. Brom, how do you, how yeah. do you think that? Uh, it's very interesting that you say that, Carl. I almost had exactly the same type of experience, uh, maybe a little bit different. Um, so I grew up with a intense love for film and uh, cinema. Um, uh, used used to watch a lot of uh, films with my dad, you know, and... Um, we could watch anything, you know, oh, wow. any age restriction, it didn't matter, you know. <laughs> Thursday nights was art movie night on Mnet, you know, and we always watched that together. So I grew up with an a intense love for cinema, um, but the same as with Carl, you know, I started uh, composing uh, when I was 16, and it was focused on, uh, if you want to call it art music or concert hall music, you know, um, or things for choir, solo piano pieces, things like that. And then also uh, the journey into film almost happened uh, like a, almost like a mistake almost, you know. Oh, wow. So um, I met Jakub Bauer and Piet Pinar at Graham Sound Festival and they heard some of my compositions and they said, would you write the music for our theater piece that we're gonna do at the art club? And obviously I was ecstatic, you know, because uh, also then, but in high school, I also experimented. I was a composer, but I was also very interested in combining visuals with music. Okay. So I did these very uh, strange um, shadow theater uh, productions with your own music with my own music so I got some of the kids together um, made a choir uh, we did some crazy things using bells oh. and the insides of pianos you know that making weird and wonderful sounds uh, combined with this visual you know so a shadow theater is in a sense a type of cinema you know yes. um, maybe some of the earliest uh, moving cinematic uh, ways that people uh, or uh, Ne? It's yeah, a type films, of film. Yes, yeah. in it, ne? Absolutely, uh, light, light yes, and dark. Yes, and um, so that was a way for me to combine music with visual, also because I experience music as a visual uh, before I hear it. It's an interesting process. So as a kind of abstract visual in my mind, it's something that I won't be able to paint but I am able to translate that into sound, you know, so that's kind of how my process works. And then working in theater, um, it was interesting uh, because I worked with really inventive people like uh, Yaku and Piet Pinar, um, gave me a nice scope, you know, to start actually practicing how to combine music with other art elements. And then slowly but surely, so I did a lot of theater work uh, in my 20s. And then slowly but surely, did a film here, did a film there. Okay. So it, was, it was also not a planned journey. You know, I, I wanted to compose uh, classical music. Mm. Give it, um, it sounds like a very holistic uh, process that you guys had where the different art forms enhanced each other. Yes. Tell me quickly, how does the composing writing process for film and TV differ from composing or writing for other purposes, uh, such as for albums, symphonies, stage, and, and, and how, how do films differ from those other things? Maybe, maybe I can just, go, it kind of continues, that yes, uh, question absolutely. continues from... Uh, exactly. Yeah, so um, uh, this visual element for me always... Um, the combination of music with a visual element becomes like a dance. It's a type of choreography. So um, you, you, 
follow so many different um, signals that are given to you from the visual elements, you know, and the dramatic elements and all of that, you know, that the impulses that uh, uh, inspire you to write something. And then there's uh, this fine dance between the music and the visual that's, oh, that's happening beautiful. on screen. Yes. And maybe even when there's dialogue, you know, so it's such a... Uh, actually difficult process to make music when there's dialogue happening you know and not to kind of weave into the uh, the dialogue not overpower it to enhance it you know enhance the scene things that you take into consideration are edit points you know um, okay. that also create the type of rhythm you know so you really enhancing what you're seeing on screen give it through a musical way or sometimes going against that you know with uh, if, if that's the case if that's what maybe what the director Director once, you know, yes. it's maybe something completely different to what's happening on screen. I've uh, to create conflict. Yes, okay. yes, yeah. Okay. Carl, Carl, uh, for you. Yeah, um, in a sort of more esoteric way of answering, writing. I've also written a lot of concert music, and uh, you know, as I said, yes. played hundreds yes. of concerts around the world in 26 countries and all that. And, and seven wow. albums and all of that. Yes. You know. So a lot of music for yes. that world, yes. which is the They're concert the world. Concert so myself world. as a pianist, either solo or with a trio or with mm -hmm. a quartet. Um, so you can't really say I didn't explore. That we explored. We explored yes. that fully. Yes. But the experience of making that type of music and especially being on the road and, and playing concerts all over the place, it, that, that's more about, that's a personal kind of journey and ex so of expression. You. Yeah. Okay. So I write my concert music and my solo music for myself, yes. definitely. That's yes. my own expression, even the way I name pieces and the narratives I create around that music. That's yes. more my own life's experience, okay. you know. Yes. You yes, write a course. piece for your mother and your, mm. <laughs> you know, because your <laughs> wife, your to wife you. and your kids, and you you gotta cover all your bases with your compositions. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Otherwise, you upset the one. <laughs> but then, when I write, you know, if I write, uh, I write a lot of scores for Netflix, and if I write uh, a movie for whatever, yes, yes. Um, that's a different experience because then I'm writing music for a story that I didn't write. That's yes. important. And that I had to learn the hard way by being fired early oh. on in my career. Early on in my scoring career, being fired of something was the best lesson I could ever have learned. Wow. Because I was still writing music for myself okay. on somebody else's film. Yes. Now that's, the, that's a cardinal mist mistake. If yes. any, I would say if you can remember that as young film composers, please okay. remember that. Yes. And, writing and for the mo movie. You, the story... And the dialogue and what you're seeing, the color treatment, the, the, the camera sweeps, yes. all of that, yes. the director's vision, that's yes. king. Okay. You, you are serving that. You are, you are just a servant mm. <laughs> to that. Yes. If, this was a, if, if the film is a palace of some yes. kind, yes, you, you five steps down from the top and you've got to know that. Mm -hmm. And you also have to be okay with that. So I would, I would always say if there's an there's a itch that as a... As a as an artist, if you have an itch to scratch for yourself, go and scratch it in the solo sphere okay. as an artist. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to decide to write for somebody else's thing, mm -hmm. remember that, that director or that, of, often I work with writer-directors. So even Blood and Water, that's writer-directors. Savage Beauty, writer-directors. Okay, you know. okay. And the, these, are, these are shows that have all gone on to be global top 10 yes, hits, you know, absolutely. over 10 million views each. You know. So that's another kind of mind thing that goes on when I write for these things because I know it's going to be seen by so many people. Everywhere. You know, and, and so I'm writing music and then in between my score is, you know, Black Coffee's in, interweaved or yes, yes. Zakes Pantweeny or Nasty C or Youngster CPT. They, all in between. So you, you're working within this pop, pop frame work. Yeah. You know, even though I'm writing with strings and... My music's got to weave with all this highly, highly pop, pop, yes. pop music. And how does that work? And so it I can't have to stand out. It can't, well, it, it's got to, it's got to work. That's the, all work. I can say, it's okay. got to work. But when I'm writing that music, I'm always thinking about who's, like, who's sitting there looking at the screen. Yeah. You know? So when I'm, when I'm done with it, I'm certainly not going to sit there and watch the screen. It's going to be you guys. Yes. You know, and a lot of you guys. Yeah. 
not just thin. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's always in my mind. So sometimes I will write this piece and I'll listen back. I'm like, oh, this is such a gorgeous piece, but it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Boom, let's yeah. yes. open up a new Cubase yes. project and let's start again. <laughs> you know, that, that happens a lot. Yes. Isn't a that lot. very frustrating? It used to be. Okay. It used to be very, very, like to the point of really just wanting not to work in this industry, but then realizing, wait, you're dealing with functional music versus ah, art music. That's the difference. Okay. That is the difference. Functional music. Functional music. It is. Yeah. When you're writing for film or TV, you are a media composer. You're not a concert composer. Yeah. That's very interesting. You know? Maybe I can add yeah. something. Yes, that. please, bro. Um, I, I agree with Kyle, and um, I think maybe for the youngsters, uh, uh, some advice, you know, is... Um, as a composer, working with directors and all different t kinds of directors, you start learning to speak a certain type of language. You almost become a psychologist in a sense, interpreting what they are telling you, that what they're wanting. Music is such an abstract thing, you know, so you have to really interpret um, their words and sometimes di some directors are better at describing what they actually want yes, yes. Uh, where others uh, not so and then then it becomes more of a, a search you know for the right ingredient and you can go through so many processes of rewrites and things like that we're so used to it by now at, mm. in the beginning not emotional anymore. It, yes yes it, it hurts in the beginning but you become tough you know as you go on exactly. um, but then also, uh, there are different types of directors that um, some directors um, give you a lot more leeway. Um, for example, um, Oliver Armanis yes, would tell yes. me, I, I would li uh, he, he likes his music to be a center stage with the action that's going on. He suddenly uses music that's just there to support what's going on, you know, okay. so the music has okay. to be very potent as well. You know, a lot of directors like a, a bit a, more of a subtle approach when it comes to scores, but then there are directors, and those are the ones that I enjoy, and I think maybe Kyle as well, where you can really let loose, and it becomes more operatic in a sense, you oh, know. That's fantastic, yes. Yeah, so. So it's part of, it's part of the narrative, it's part of the story. Yes. And it's also adding another layer, you know, it's yes. not just interpreting what's there, it's actually being very much a contributing factor to the narrative. Another yeah. character. Yes, okay. but it depends on the project. Yeah. If it's a, some are like that, some aren't, you know, uh, we're lucky when we get those where we can almost use our more personal touch yeah. for those types of yeah. things. So the, at the end of the day, being a servant of the story, and I like that that yeah. kind of thing, which brings me to um, just explain the difference between a, a score composer and someone that just compiles or, or edits the music. Um, what's the difference there? Um, huge difference. <laughs> Please remember, we are not the same people. Yes, <laughs> yeah, you know these we are uh, from a different planet completely. Okay, okay, no, so <laughs> no. Yes. Um, I think you're talking about the music editor, I'm not sure. Yes, yes the music uh, editor, yeah. yes. Music editors that I've worked with, in South Africa, I haven't worked with musical we editors often it. because no. the music department is just mm. you yeah. <laughs> or me. Oh, okay. Whereas, you know, yes. I've done some international stuff, like $80 million film, where there's a 10-person music. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm one of four composers yeah. and two music editors and like a down to the librarian for the recording mm. session and all of that. Yes. You know, it's just because there, there's budget for okay, it. Okay, so not in South Africa. But in our schools, we are all of those yes. things. <laughs> oh, so in South in, Africa, you have to be the compiler, the editor, kind of, and the composer. Yeah, unfortunately. Different yeah. hats. I'm just trying to figure out what your question is. Do you mean people that... that uh, just for the film it guys, because um, okay. I mean, they first film Do you mean editing like library music or I don't understand what you mean. So the Taking a comp uh, original score and so editing So the original it. score you guys do. Yes. Right? Then the music compiler, what do they... Oh, you mean if the show or the, or the movie is using uh, commercial music? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. That, in my experience, again in South Africa, that should be a music editor's job. Okay. But I found here it's actually the editor's job. Yeah. The the, the guy cutting the picture. Yeah. Okay, so he's got. He's throwing well. in yes. black coffee and. Yes. 
Okay. And some Him and the director. The director, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bram, so, so um, internationally you say 10, 10 people crew, Yeah. but not here. You know. I think a music editor, um, and maybe just to explain exactly what they do, you yes, know. Please. So sometimes they'll come from a musical background. They could also be a composer. It's usually someone that listens to a lot of music, you know. So they're actually not writing as much, but they have their fingers on the tab. So they have a collection of composers at their disposal. They also have big libraries of music. So they will work quite... Uh, intensively with the editor of the film, uh, as Carl said. So the editor usually also chooses the music, and a lot of editors use music to cut to. So they will use uh, temp music um, to to help them with the rhythm of the edit and things like that. And then we usually get temp music as an example of what the director is actually looking for, you know. Oh, so that, that goes to you guys to give you a better idea. Yeah, yes. uh, it's, it's, sometimes it helps, sometimes it's a, yeah, it's, uh, and, and to try and forget what they actually used and to write something original and new and fresh is quite a challenge. But a music editor will collaborate quite extensively with the editor and the director finding a type uh, interpret he, the music editor is actually that psychologist who interprets what the director wants oh, yeah and okay yeah yes. and then they choose they have a vast knowledge of what's out there because a lot of people listen to the same music over and over you know but these music editors they listen to everything so they'll be able to say there's this composer, you know, or there's this okay, song, you know, and okay. let's try it. And then the music editor, so the director uh, sometimes wouldn't even communicate with the composer. So the director would communicate more with the music editor and then the music editor, uh, in, uh, and then kind of um, facilitates the process, you know. So it's like Kyle said, it's totally, totally, totally different yes. areas. Yes, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. thank you so much. It's just uh, wonderful to clear that up because we know in film there's so, it's so many people involved for this one thing. So to know the different areas uh, for our future filmmakers is very important. Um, do you, for our young filmmakers, do they have to know how to compose? What are the essentials that you would recommend for them for the... the the music making of their films. Do they have to know how to compose, or what? What do they have to know? You, you mean the composers or the uh, for the, the young filmmakers? So filmmakers, they directors and writers and. I mean, for our young guys that are, have to do everything. Oh, they have to do everything. They, they have to. They don't necessarily wow. have the luxury yes. of having <laughs> of a composer. Also. Do they have to know how to compose, or can they can they get advice or? What are, what are the essentials when you compose for a movie? You said serving the story, but what else? Sure. Well, I would, I would candidly say that I, I wouldn't be able to do anything else in a film besides what I can do. Yeah, these I mean, I, kids are amazing, yes, I must yeah, say. Yeah, well, yes. so I already take my hat off if you are doing that. Yes. Um, certainly, if you have to do everything yourself, like in an indie film where you've got like a hundred rand budget, <laughs> and you're shooting it on your phone, yes. which you can do these days because, you know. Phones are amazing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I suppose if you can write some music, that would be wonderful. And, and we have to get onto this at some point, but I'm not, sure, I, I'm not sure your methodology, but mine is very much, I do everything inside a computer. Okay. Before, okay. I, before it touches a musician. Okay, so, so, so I think we have to yeah. talk about that yes, soon. We'll, yeah, we can. That's a very to important. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, so you guys uh, who probably all have computers and who are probably all wiz, computer wizards, I'm sure. I mean, you guys, you all grew up in that. We Absolutely. we kind of had to learn. Oh, man, I didn't. I knew how to switch it on, and <laughs> when I started, you know, and now. Now I feel like a computer programmer almost, you know. Wow. Like that's how okay. much time yes. I spend on, on a computer, really. Yes. Making the different sounds. Oh, man, it's know. like okay. uh, most of my days in front of a screen. Yes. That's, that's unfortunately what my, my, our lives, lives are. Um, uh, the kids also have music departments. I mean, I'm sure they can uh, sync in with the music department to compose some music 
for for the film is that a good idea uh, so, uh, uh, that that seems like a synergy that should be happening yeah okay for sure. great yeah Bron, your thoughts on that yeah i can i can add something to that um and i think i also uh, mentioned this uh in one of the videos from last year yes um i think uh a type of ingenuity, you know. So if you th if you know what type of film you're making um, and what type of music you need, or maybe it's not even music, maybe it's sound, you know. Um, I always had to be very uh, inventive with small budgets, especially in theatre productions, yes. you know. So you think of ways to make something impressive yet but with limited means you know yes. and also to look around you know to to see um what is at your disposal like you said the music department yes. you know so interact with them you know maybe someone i usually find uh, as soon as you start working on a project people that are come uh, across your way uh, that will benefit you you know as soon as you open up and you start chatting with people um be, so it's important to to chat with people yes to get that and look around you know like uh, uh, ask around you know and uh, that's the way you'll find interesting people to collaborate with you it and um, don't limit yourself you know be inventive you know even even like with the cell phones that uh, can record beautiful images you know maybe you can even just get a very basic mic set up and get some friends together, you know, and you can actually have a wonderful workshopping session creating a score for something. And it might have an incredible original sound, you know, so you never know what can come out of that. Give it all, maybe there's a choir at your school, you know, and um, you say, let's uh, work with the choir, uh, uh, just uh, get get someone if if your film tends to be more in the musical sense rather than sound effect sense you know then get someone who has a musical background you know to be able to play chords or Great. maybe r write some sketches and things that uh, you can explore you but um i think um yeah, always just being open to possibilities. You get, there are so many possibilities right around us. You get, yes, absolutely. Um, and um, just to be able to see those you get, and to bring it into your project. That kind of ingenuity. Carl, yes. you just said... To to that, yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. I would also say if, if, if you guys are... So I, again, I'm not sure what, what skills everyone has. So I'm, I'm just trying yes. to figure that out. Yes. <laughs> if, you, if you guys are, are becoming... Uh, good at or proficient at cutting video in the software. I'm yes. assuming you're doing that or someone's doing that. Yes, if you're I making have, a, I have to cut. So yes. if you're cutting video, at the same time, you could be learning how to cut audio because it's very similar. The technique is yes, very similar. In fact, in fact, it looks the same. If, the you waves, drag the, yes. if you drag the wave this way, that's your full song. If you drag it back that way, that's... Same with picture. If you drag the picture this way, I mean, okay... If this was, drag it that way, that's your, yes. drag it this way, that's shorter. You know, yes. it's like similar concepts. Absolutely. You know, whether you're in Final Cut or whatever. That's what, that's what, uh, so, so how important is it to know how to program music? There we go. Does having programming and sound engineering skills add value to a career opportunities within the world of composing? And, and so the, so the, those are two different things that we're talking about, firstly. So the first thing that I'm talking about is if you're cutting video, you could be cutting audio. So now we have to ask ourselves what audio. Yeah. So let's say you can't find any composers on your campus or you yes. can't find any original music. You guys, again, spend your whole day on the internet. Yes. A simple Google search, royalty-free, cinematic music, yes. boom, 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 really? 1,000 options. Yeah. Go and download some music. Yes. Or even, I mean, I don't suppose this is going to Netflix your, your movies yet. No, so maybe, maybe just yeah. use use music music use okay. use uh, but especially royalty free. I would uh, I would uh, recommend that. Yeah, so that okay. you don't have any trouble if you put it online. But I mean, if if it's not gonna go out there, download the Dark Knight score and cut your move. You know, whatever. <laughs> Like, you, the internet's amazing. It is. It, <laughs> it is. really is amazing. Yeah, we are, um, you know. I've said this before, you know, these are the kids of the next robotics. So, I mean, I, I, sh I don't think I even have to say this. Like, a simple Google search, there's royalty-free everything, mm. you know. That's and it's, it's maybe not the greatest music out there, but mm. for you to cut your film, sure. It'll work yeah. fine. Then okay. your next question is about 
programming yes. music. Now yes. that's a whole different. Uh, is that's, it a total different thing? Well, that's that's the work of a composer yeah. who, who's ah. writing music often inside a computer, and that's a whole. That's I think another week workshop. Is on, it on that. okay? Yeah. So that's a that's big writing thing. original music and also knowing how to program that inside a computer. Okay, okay. And so without the luxury of an eighty-piece orchestra, you can manipulate your software to sound eighty percent as good. Oh, as wow. an ATP's mm-hmm. orchestra. And that's where yeah. you, you and Brom, you spend a lot of time f- with the studios and on that type of software. Um, yeah, I'll just do a quick answer. Yeah, so everything I do is first done in a computer. Yes. Wow. And so even so, right, I'm writing an orchestral score now. Yes. So every piece I write, I do what we call mock-up. I mock it up inside the software with, uh, with all the strings, sounds, all the brass sounds, all the percussion sounds, all of it that's there. Okay. So when I send the director my, my mock-ups, the demos or the mock-ups, yes. it sounds like the real orchestra. Close. I would say 80% as good because we also become very good at making that sound yes. re- really realistic. Yes. You know, like, like you, you would, only we could maybe tell that it's a computer and okay. maybe another composer that uses the same software. That's very but to the lay person, they wouldn't. They, I've done this. I've done this test before. Yeah. Like, just listen to this. Yeah. Just to anyone, and listen to this. What do you think is a computer? And usually, people can't tell. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, they they getting so clever with the sample uh, or the virtual instruments, as we call it, give it, and they're just getting bigger and better, more detailed, more different sounds, you know. And as Carl said, you know, it's an essential. Uh, process part of the process doing these mock-ups because because the recording sessions even if you are going to record the recording sessions are so expensive so you have to have some other way for a director to uh, okay a piece of music before you actually go into the session to okay, record it because okay. otherwise you have a backlash you um, get you know I would never go into a recording session without having that okay from the director so, um, that makes, I don't know, I hope that makes sense that, to people. That makes, <laughs> that makes perfect sense okay. in terms yeah. of for the process uh, of these guys, you know, just understanding the whole process of, of composing for a film. It, it's, it's a massive, massive undertaking. Like you said, uh, you, all, all, you are an engineer on your computer program. Oh, yeah. You have to learn that. Yeah. You have to do all the different kinds of, of composing. Tell me qu- quickly, your path was through composing, creating original sounds for theater, for movies. If the students choose a different path, could they become a composer as well? Yes. Through, through which way would they then do that? I'd like to no, <laughs> answer this. Yes. Like you you no, said it's God. so multifaceted. I, I would, you know... Dear Lord, please let somebody come along with a different uh, path. Okay. Because that's what's always needed, you know. I, I'm, I'm more afraid of things being done the same old way than I am things being done the new way. I like that. And, and you kids are in such a... Film scoring is a, is a music technology exercise now. There's very few people in the world. If your name's John Williams, that's different. John Williams can sit by his piano and write with a pencil and paper... Wow. And the director, even if you're Steven Spielberg, does not check up on him. And the first time they hear the music is when you're recording in London at Abbey Road Studios with an 80-piece orchestra, which cost about a million rand a day. Yo. But that's John Williams. Yes, right? okay. So unless your initials are JW, forget about it. <laughs> like, forget about it. You are going to be sitting in front of screens in the whole day. Okay. And your ideas, you'll write your melodies and your harmonies, and you want it for, for a Philharmonic orchestra, or it's usually just brass and strings, whatever. Yes. And the director that you're working with is going to need to be convinced about that music. And the way you do that is you mock it up inside the computer. Now, that... That job is a music technology job. Okay. Because so you're sitting in front of a computer making a, that computer sound like an orchestra. Yes. Or sound like a synth group. Or I just did a heist film where I was programming lots of percussion and okay. making that sound like a percussion ensemble. Yes. You know? Yes. And nobody. Because but obviously, also the music background. I mean, of course, being a, having the background is, is. But with that said, some of the top composers that we all know and love 
don't have that background at all. Never had a music. Danny Elfman and Hans Zimmer never ever went to music school. Never. No, and they're the Hans? top composers. Wow. Hans, Hans Zimmer had a couple of piano lessons in his life and then quit. <laughs> didn't go to university. Junkie XL who did Mad Max, Deadpool, all of those. Yeah. Never had a, a formal music composing lesson or never. They just sat in front of the computer. So there's not just, I mean, you guys had a very like holistic kind of way. It came to you. So there is, they can go study sound, sound technology, sound engineering. No, you can just do what your authentic thing is, right? There's, I, I always believe this, like music, the music in, South, in the South African landscape, for example, and I always, I'm not a pop musician, but I always think of pop and dance music. Yes. Who are the guys that, that, that change the musical landscape, you know, whether it's Shangan Electro or, or Ama Piano, whatever. We may, we may not like to listen to that music. I certainly don't. Or I, I don't know if you... Or house music from Durban or Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's not us with our master's degrees, you know, who are, who are lighting up the world, who are making kids excited about music. They, yes. It's not us. Unfortunately, yeah. I wish it was, but it's not. And for, so often our, because, you know, we studied till, our, till the cows come home. Often that is like a hindrance mm -hmm. to making the new thing. Okay, you know, like so you when, said at the beginning, yeah. you, when you said you, you got fired at the beginning and you had to learn to be in service. Uh, I don't know, the, the in service, it sounds a bit like a church service now. That's <laughs> not what I, let's forget that word. Okay, so We're not talking about that now, no. Okay. We're talking about the fact that you can use the technology as an instrument. Mm -hmm. So what was it, 400 years ago when they perfected the piano? That was like the top piece of technology in society. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know if it's 400 years or 300, whatever. Okay. Like the piano itself, that's a piece of technology. Yes. The violin, when they, in, when they perfected it, that's also a piece of technology of the day. Yes. Now, our technology of the day yes. can be used as an instrument, and we do it on a daily basis, and yeah. you guys are more naturally inclined mm. to do that than we are. Yes. So Absolutely. that's what I'm saying. Like the path is the, the only path to making it work is your path. Yes. Yeah. But you gotta graft. You just gotta graft. Whatever yeah. you choose to do, yes. you really gotta just graft and graft yes. and graft and graft. Yeah. That's amazing. So if you like guys. sitting in front yes. of a computer and you mm. wanna make music, mm. then make it every day, though. Yes. On in front of your laptop, you got to be making beats or you have to go do it. Sorry, last thing. Now the other thing is, and we've all watched, whether it's from Bridgerton to Blood and Water to what's his other scores, Stranger Things. Let's go there. Yes. This is a hot thing now. Mm. Those guys are not classical formal mm. composers. Those guys are like they make beats. Yeah. Okay. So even if you like to sit every day on your laptop and your parents don't understand what you're doing, but you're making these cool beats and mm. if it's house music or mm. EDM or yes. all, that can also lead you to where, what we're talking about. Okay. Because it, look at the examples. Yes. The Stranger Thing compo composers are, are electronic music musicians. They're not yeah. classical musicians. Yes. Okay. That's okay. key also. Yeah. So okay. like us... Trained musicians like to think this is the only way to get in. The, it's absolutely not. So it's find a, a new way, like you said. Yeah. Find it's a not different even way. new anymore. Yes. You know what I'm, I like? We so. kind of like becoming a bit old-fashioned now. Okay. We are. We are. <laughs> Ram, yes. tell me quickly. Um, uh, what do you think of? I mean, that's that is fantastic advice. Thank you so much, Kyle. Yeah. For our film it guys, you know, just get out there, get your laptop or your phone, and do it. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah. I, no, I agree uh, with Kyle. I th I think the. Uh, possibilities are actually endless and the, as you said before the internet is so vast you know and there are so many different interesting uh, programs out there plugins you know and things you just have to start looking at the forums and give it those things and people are talking about those th uh, give it different types of uh, programs that you can use to alter sounds to make you can record um a sound of uh, wind blowing through the trees, you know, and then okay. you can uh, make it into something musical, musical, you know. Yeah, so I, uh, I think Kyle has a, uh, such a valid point there where um, uh, uh, the technology is giving everybody more of an opportunity to make a new uh, type of sound. A it, new type uh, of sound, yeah. something totally new, yes. not, never been heard. Yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah.
it's very interesting because like you earlier said, you know, understanding the engineering side, the editor having to compile the music and so on. Um, are you guys ever involved in, in generating the soundscape or the effects of the movie for it to not interfere with your composition or anything like that? I actually did a recording just two weeks ago um, for something like this. I'm actually very interested to hear Jade's talk just now because I find that Foley is such an interesting world. Um, so I composed music for a short animation film okay. and it's a very detailed piece of music for voices, uh, woodwinds, percussion, medieval instruments, uh, uh, renaissance instruments. Um, and uh, so it's five minutes of music with a voiceover. So I created this very intricate score uh, weaving in and out of this voiceover and um, then uh, the the film t takes place in nature, you know. So there's a lot of nature sounds, a lot of um, a lot of uh, 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 water sounds, rain sounds, the birds, animals. You get. Uh, uh, and you were involved in choosing all of this. So, so what what actually happened was the the music is so I, I spent a lot of time composing it. You get. I I also. Um, People, people usually put a lot of emphasis on qu uh, quantity, you know. But for for me, uh, this was like a, a, a five minutes of music that actually contained so many work hours. You get um, so detailed, um, and it's also linked to the uh, visuals. It's linked to the voiceover. It's also telling its own story. And the guys towards the end said, okay, so we need these sounds for these actions happening, you know, like yes. a kingfisher diving into the water, catching a fish, you know, and swimming back up. And I said, um, I didn't feel comfortable with them using um, uh, uh, real sound, you know, like collected sound, uh, uh, foley, uh, not really foley sound, uh, but creating a soundscape out of field yes, recordings yes. and things like that. So what I actually did was, um, and this is the first time I, I've done this, I actually created all the sounds with a choir. So I worked with a Cape Town opera chorus, and we made all the sounds of the rain, and a fish. of the fish, of the, uh, wow, the cars, of cool. the... Um, I even had the uh, the singers at one stage. We were building up the sound of the river burbling, you know, and doing different things with the uh, mouth, you know, etc. And uh, I, I think some of the singers probably thought I was completely crazy. <laughs> um, I had them like gargling water, you know, and it sounds so silly, but we're uh, combined with these 18 singers all gargling water, not doing the typical gargle that you do when you gargle when you brush your teeth, you know, but without making a actual sound coming f from your throat just gargling or just blowing wind through that water it actually sounded just like a river you know and it was such a nice wow. yeah we even made heartbeat sounds you know and it was such a nice exploration um with the singers you know uh, so composing a choir not just in instruments yes so compose working with a choir workshopping so and also for me it was a uh, we weren't trying to create like the exact sound of that actual thing, you yes. know. We were making an impression of it, a poetic interpretation of that sound, give it so and it fits in with the music. So I could tune the different sounds. So for example, if there were cows they were uh, uh, bellowing on the notes you it, of the chords cow. yes <laughs> and the heartbeats were tuned that the give it, uh, it and it fits in so wonderfully with the music so it actually sits with the score it's not separate um to the score but this that's actually the first time i've done it i'm i'm very intrigued with foley sounds because it's such a wonderful uh, process and usually the things that they use to do the actual sound is completely different to what the actual thing is, yes. you know, if they break a, if someone breaks a uh, arm, you know, whatever, that's maybe a celery stick, you know, that someone's, yeah. Uh, yeah. or a carrot or whatever. You Which is um, also, I guess you can make music, you know, with those different instruments. Uh, uh, 
Oh, uh, like breaking carrot for the beat and. Oh yes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. what do you you have you ever composed a choir or, or used different? Or, are you part of that process? When I mean, Barakat is just an amazing film. Were you part of choosing the the, the different sound effects or stuff like that? No, no. Not, so. So, I mean, that sounds wonderful, what, what Bram's doing, using, I would say, performing musicians to make sounds. Yes. To sound, designing sounds, but with human beings, so that's yes. fantastic. Wow. Um, you, you're not part of that process. That's not, well, I mean, I think there's a distinct difference from your question. What Bram did was, that, that was a kind of compositional choice in a way. Oh. Where, Okay. Where the sounds he was making in, in actually replaced Foley. Okay, okay. So when the kingfisher breaks the water, instead of adding the, the uh, sound of the, that sound, the yes. real sound, mm -hmm. you replaced it with something that's, that's okay. different. And, yes. and, and also, um, maybe I can just yes. ask for something like an animation, you know, that could work. Yeah, but oh, for a so it's a different, yeah. because yeah. we had uh, uh, the animation um, shop talk uh, as well. So that would mainly work for animation or something more stylized more stylized yeah. i understand or, or you got to have a director that's into that mm. you know mm. i could see Directors a number of of, yes. of just quickly people. Yeah. um i've got two last yeah. questions now one of my favorite artists and this doesn't necessarily have anything to do is william kentridge and you had the 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 chance to work with him and 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 do some what tell me Composing for that visual medium, what was what is that like? Because he's a very specific um, uh, mm. artist as well. Um, yeah. What was that like? Um, I work with William. How did that start? Gosh, and it's kind of been non-stop for like five years. <laughs> it can get, it can get a lot sometimes. Um, I did a piece where I was uh, kind of similar, not similar. I. <laughs> I think what you did with the choir sounds very... I would love to hear that, actually. I'm so curious now. <laughs> um, but I, I've always kind of... I love playing the acoustic piano, just the piano. Like, I've done so many concerts, just solo piano. And oh, wow. I, I, I'm also an improviser. That's actually my first voice is as an improviser. Jazz, but beyond jazz, I think. Okay. You know, improvising just music. Mm -hmm. that, beyond genre. That, that's really my passion is to sit down and improvise for 60 minutes or whatever. Wow. That's really... But I also do feel like composition is improvising just a lot slower. Mm -hmm. So the process of composing is kind of like improvising, but it's like slowed down. Yes. You know, improvising is like 100 thoughts per second yeah. sure. versus composing, you can stop. Oh, that was yes. nice. Let me try that again. You know, when I'm improvising on stage, there's no chance to try it again. Mm -hmm. There's only chance to redevelop a mistake wow. or take a mistake and use that as the nucleus for a new idea. Yes. But, I've, you know, yes, composing absolutely. is the same because I, I, my, the, the way I start composing is I always play. Yes. And my ideas come from playing in, into the computer. Yes. You know? And I always start with the piano because I'm a pianist. Yes. You know? And other people will start with other instruments. Uh, anyway, but, but when, when I hooked up with, with William, although I had been... Uh, writing films, which is, of course, the, the technology type of thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's different for other people. Yes. Um, I'd also been, I think I was, I just, I did some tours to Japan and all of that. And then he, he commissioned a piece from me to perform at his uh, 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 a sort of like a think tank center that he, that okay. he funds called the Center for the Less Good Idea. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that center is kind of like to, to come with new ideas and to perform those ideas, whether it fails or succeeds, oh, doesn't, ma doesn't yes. matter. So I thought, oh, well, okay, I'm ready to like, give you a proper failure now. <laughs> but anyway, so what I did was I, I wanted to combine the two worlds, the film, my, my, my work in film and, and my work as an improvising pianist. Okay, and the yes. only way I could do that was I, I recorded a lot of things, uh, people talking, people singing. Uh, I recorded some of my mentors, uh, um, like sort of just talking philosophically or yes, whatever. Yes, And I, I, I recorded that and I chopped it up and I built it into a sampler. And so what that meant was I could, uh, I had a little like a two octave uh, 
MIDI keyboard. Yes, yes. Again, I hope all of this makes any kind of sense to anyone. I don't know. Um, and so on middle C, I would have Brahm saying, hello, yes, hello, yes, hello. Yeah, like and a sound on a you, keyboard, yes. On E flat, I'll have you saying yeah. goodbye, whatever. Yeah. But I added like two octaves, so that's like, let's say, 24 notes or whatever. Um, and and I, uh, along with the piano here, yeah, acoustic piano, yes. and piano and the sampler here, yeah, I would I improvised with uh, playing the piano with the one hand. It was mm. this way, <laughs> and playing the sampler yes. with my other hand. So I had all these little phrases that I recorded from friends to mentors to whatever, all yes. mapped out on the keyboard. Yes. So, hello, hello. Yeah. Did you, you memorize each one and you knew? I kind of knew more or less where they were, yeah. yeah. So I would, if I had you on middle C, yes. on the octave higher C, I would also have Brahm saying somebody else. So I knew C oh, okay. was Brahm. Yes, yes. And then going, you know, so I kind of had a, a map, I kind of had a thing, a kind of thing like that. Okay. And, and I had lots of things, little uh, chopped up uh, samples of the Khoisan and the Khosa singing and... And then I, I, I kind of learned that, and, and some of them were like vocal lines of a closer singer, like okay. a long vocal line. So I would plonk it down and then improvise chords under this. But what I liked about it was that it, it was very spontaneous. So it, it wasn't a composition that, that I did at home, that I knew what was going to happen on the, on the stage. So I knew what the samples were. Obviously, I know what the piano is, sort of. And then I, I just decided to improvise with the, those were my instruments, okay. the sampler and the. And while. And anyway, yeah. While William was doing. Uh, no, no, no. So this was just me on the stage, but he was there. Okay. And he loved it so much. He really loved it. Fantastic. Yeah, and I think it worked out okay. I mean, I developed the piece a little bit later. I mean, I I can just from you guys, um, explaining. I'm I'm just in all my mind is exploding. I must mm. tell you, about just getting out there and doing it. Mm whether it is with a choir, whether it is mm. with sounds, getting the product out there and exploring your film. One final question, and this is more technical. Any duty-free sites or, um, for our teams? Or, or, and, and is there a program that you maybe, some software that you can recommend for them at all? So I, I heard you saying Cubase. We, I think we both use Cubase, right? Cubase. It's, it's a, yeah, it's quite a, it's simple enough, but you, it also has a lot of power. You know, I think it's a very good program to start out in because a lot of sound engineers either use Cubase or Nuendo. It's just a program. Nuendo. So it make, if you're going to uh, start learning a program, I would suggest that program. Um, it's also quite reasonable in price, um, very versatile. And if you're going into music down the line, ach, it's easy to go from one program to another, you know, but... Uh, that Cubase it, is a good Cub starting point. I would say. Ne? And then, like you said um, earlier on Google, duty-free music, cinematic music. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe just one thing yes, before... Going. I, I just want to... So duty free, yes, okay. You get maybe you need something uh, specific. You have something specific in mind, but I would really suggest trying to make your own score. Even if it's, uh, I would I would rather even if you just have a cell phone to record something. I I would rather record something on a cell phone that's original than uh, using duty-free music. That's just my, the, the way that I think, give it and what I prefer. And then also you, um, okay, duty-free, you can use it, give it, but um, uh, uh, if you do something, if you create something on your own, it's something fresh, it, and it's also something that you then own down the line, you know. So if this film gets sold, you can also make money from the oh, soundtrack because yes. the two things do make money. Be sure to um, maybe also just as a technical thing, um, we always, when we work with musicians, they get paid for the session, but they always have to sign a musician's release form, you know, because okay. uh, be very uh, uh, careful about those things. If you are planning on having your film on Netflix later on, you know, the, yes. the, the producers will ask for all those contracts. And if you don't have those contracts in place, they can't actually buy it from you, you know. I understand. So if you do a recording with a choir in the school or whatever, maybe the thing takes flight and it becomes super popular and then people crawl out of the woodworks and say, this is my idea, you know, the, I, I was part 
part in this. Um, I have some claim to this, you know. So but, uh, go and read up a bit on on okay. those things that that uh, could help you down down the line. And uh, yeah, just f f uh, from all of that. Okay, great. Can we get on to questions from our audience? I just want to suggest one important. Absolutely. So before you get your before you spend your parents' money, there's a free <laughs> DAW called Reason. It's just as good as all the other programs. And reason. it's absolutely, it's a reason. Yeah. Okay. Google Reason. Yeah. If you have an Apple laptop, uh, GarageBand is free. GarageBand is not so good. But Logic is also cheap on a Mac. Lo Some of the best composers, John Powell, who does How to Train Your Dragon, he uses Logic. It's no, oh, there's wow. nothing okay. wrong with Logic. Cubase is more standard. Okay. But start with Reason. Tell me the, the free one, just the name again for reason. Our reason. Okay, reason. Okay, any questions from our audience? Any questions, guys? Yes, please. You've been here before. It's for anyone who has an answer. Um, at what stage do you approach a composer? Do you come with just a script, or do you prefer to have a visual as well? Okay, I'll go first. Oh, gosh, don't tell my, my director colleagues this. But I never read the script. I don't read the script. I have my reason for it. My reason is, if I read a script, and I did before, I used to, I read the script, and I go over it, I make all my footnotes, and all. I always imagine the film to be something that it ends up not being. So I imagine, imagine, my imagination runs wild, and already I have this image of who the lead actress is, and of course, I, someone I'm attracted to, whatever, <laughs> you know. And then you get this film, and you put it up, and you're like, whoa. Yeah. The color palette's different, the locations are different. So I'm a type of person who I like to get the film, even in the first draft of the edit. I like to look at something and let the visual, what I'm seeing, be the impetus for what I start writing, not what... Because when we read something, we always make, we always read between the lines, if, you know, if you have any kind of, uh, um, what's the word, comprehensive technique. When we all do, I guess we went to school. So we always comprehend the story in our own way. And we start to attach our own visuals, which can be a little bit dangerous when you're working with a film. That's I, I, in my uh, experience. No, I, I agree completely. It, exactly the same thing happens to me. So I also try to wait for the actual images. Um, but I think it's a good process if the director has already employed you. Um, and if the director is busy developing, they've already spent maybe years uh, thinking about this film, you know. So if you can have, uh, if they haven't uh, shot anything, uh, if you can have meetings with the director and just have like one-on-one -on -one discussion ses sessions, you know, where they can basically um, plant some seeds, you know, of the tone, you know, or the character or whatever, what, what their vision is for the film, even before they start with the shoot. And I find that those uh, nuggets, you know, they they sit in your subconscious, you know, in, in your dreams, in your daily life, you know, the ideas will start popping up. And once you get the actual film, it actually goes faster then, you know. So I think a constant, as soon as possible, start talking to the composer if you know that composer can uh is the right composer for your film you know and start having a discussion i think it just eases it in better into the process i would say also just sorry following on from that if it, if there isn't a picture in place um definitely have at least have a visual concept and also a bit of a sound concept because mm -hmm. i've also sat in these meetings where there's just a script and there's no concept and then you sit there like, okay, yeah. I'll, you leave that meeting not inspired, you, you, you have zero idea what type of film they're making. I think a director, a director's really got to know what he's, he or she is doing. Like they got to, there's for a number of reasons, and, and you can even go, besides the creative, artistic side of what we all do, there's also a practical side. So you, you cannot get on set not knowing what you're going to do. You cannot 
pay people, get them on set, or uh, I'm now talking professionally, but in the same way, you can't get a, 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 deal, a director of photography or you can't get a composer if you don't know what your film is or what, it, what your visual concept is, what your color concept is, what your sound is it a big virtuosic score, like a Star Wars score, or is it a down like a Terence Malick film where it's like just one synth sound the whole film? You know, is it a minimal score? Is it a synth score? Is it an electronic score? Is it beats? Is it orchestral? I like to know. I like a director to say, we're gonna go towards a hybrid score. We want synths and we want strings. Woo, great. And then we can rather debunk, we can rather argue for the next few months as to why we're not going to do that, but at least there's an initial idea, yes. you know? Um. Uh, I also have a second question. Um, so in film, if you go listen to the scores of uh, these big blockbusters, the score is often a lot longer than what actually appears in the film. So with us, we have low budget, we're doing like 15-minute films. Do you recommend us... If we let's say we're doing three songs for a film, do you recommend us finish, finishing the songs and then ending up with a lot more music than we use, or is it better to just stick with the little piece that we need and move on to the next song? So you, if you write full songs, then you're going to need somebody to edit those songs to your picture, because what you you are absolutely right. So in in these big films, because there's a team of music editors. So the score composer will maybe write the score to the producer's cut. And the producer's cut is about two cuts away from the final cut. So it means the film is still going to change two times once the composer's already started. And when you're writing 120 minutes of music in a 150-minute film, you don't really have time between the producer's cut and the two months later, the final cut, to be editing, edit. You know, so what they what they would do is they would write just full, full, full to the to that long producer's cut, which is like four hours, and they're going to reduce that four hours down to 150 minutes. So that's a lot of cutting. Yeah. But then music that's where the importance of having a music editor comes in because they will edit the record the score to the final cut. But now in our in our industry in South Africa, that's not usually the case. We often having to edit the music before we record the orchestra, blah 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 blah. blah. Yeah. You see, so you have to make that choice again. That's when you have your production meeting on the Monday morning. You have to say, "This is how we're gonna we're gonna give the composer the final cut, or we're gonna give him like a working cut." Yeah. You know. Yeah. I I would I would always suggest recording more than what you actually need. You know, not. Uh, stopping so you don't know maybe down the line if you're creating a, an original song maybe it, it it will become quite popular you know and then you can only publish 20 seconds of it you know where as if you recorded the whole song you can publish the whole song on spotify you know make it available to people and then also uh, a safety net you know maybe you d uh, discover oh i still need something for the end titles you know and you can grab a bit from a piece that you didn't use you know or some other part that you later on realize on watching it for the 10,000th time you know that you uh, this part still needs something and i can't really repeat that 20 seconds year for the seventh time you know um to create a bit of variation give it so um i would i would suggest if if it's within your means to rather record more than what you actually need uh, at that stage yeah thank you well that's that's wonderful because you said something so important is everybody needs to have the same vision and the director especially needs to know every single part. That planning part is very, very important. Thank you so much. Um, one more question. Anybody? Yes. Um, so, when you are composing music, do you usually have an idea beforehand, like, I'm going to play in D major with these instruments and this melody, or do you just figure it out along the way, basically? That's my question. For me, personally, I'm not sure what your uh, method is, but for me, it's an intuitive process. 
you know, so, and it can also change. I don't have the same method every time I write something. Each film is different, you know. A lot of times, what, uh, what I do love about the cell phone is that it has the voice memo um, recording option. So I will get melody ideas. If I, if I already know about the project that I'm working on, um, I will get melody ideas when I least expect it, you know, so I'll quickly pop out my phone, record the melody idea. That's you, uh, most of the time how it happens for me. Other times, um, as we've mentioned before, you get some type of um, temp score from the editor, usually putting that in. So that kind of has to inspire you. So you kind of have to listen to it and then forget it and then write something new. But yeah, for me, uh, there's a myriad of different approaches, you know, and for each project, it's different, yeah. But I would suggest always have your voice memo. You you might not know when you get a brilliant melody idea or even a harmonic idea. Go go to the piano, play it, give it, capture it. Uh, it comes and it flies away within a few instances. Give it. You you won't remember it usually. Give it. Yeah. I hope okay. that helps. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I. You know, in, in music and uh, classical, the real classical composers know this very well. I'm, I, I'm not saying I do too, but different keys affect the human body in different ways. And when it affects your body in a certain way with frequency and vibration, it affect, affects your emotion, mm -hmm. your emotional response to it. Now, this is perfect for a film composer because if I look at the loves, now I've written for love scenes, sex scenes, mm -hmm. murder scenes, Funeral scenes, yeah. Yeah. car chase scenes, I've written it all. Mm -hmm. And so you need to know I I immediately mm -hmm. what's going what's gonna to affect the audience for what's needed here. Mm -hmm. And I find the key choices so important uh -huh. there. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. like Barakat, for example, that was a, a, a sort of wholesome family story. Mm -hmm. light, very light. So I wrote that in E. It was very important for me to stay in E for that entire film. And even in the sort of more darker moments, I would go to the relative minor, you know, go to C sharp minor and not really deviate from that. You know, a lot of the score I did for uh, Savage Beauty on, on Netflix, which is a revenge story, which can be quite dark and gritty. I did a lot of that in C minor. And then uh, I was really feeling adventurous, just a tone up, but not not deviating too much. So with the series, the way I build a score for six episodes is very much key centers become so important because I'm building themes over a really long, over six hours of, of material, you know. Yes. Um, so that choice is just look at, looking at what you got. Again, it's like, look, wh what am I seeing? What do I, what's the emotion? Yeah. You know, and the other thing is very important is, is you, you're always better off scoring the emotion of what you're seeing as opposed to just exactly the exactly what you see, if you like reading between the lines of the emotion of, and, and emotion is not just uh, a, a g good emotions. That's also bad. Neg dark emotions are also emotions. So even I'm not just talking about love scenes now. I mean, I say emotion. I mean, yeah. even in the gritty revenge, you know. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Wonderful. I'm so glad you said that, Kyle conveying the emotion from that. I urge you all, get your music departments involved because um, this is quite complex, but it is quite amazing. And it sounds like if you have a phone and if it suits the film, um, get going. Practice, practice, practice and play. That's all from us. Thank you so much, Bram. Thank you so much, Kyle. That's it for Film It Film uh, Shop Talks. Mm -hmm.